Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Friday, September 13th, and we are here trying to help you make better or less bad financial decisions, or maybe just guide you through something, some transition in your life, whatever that transition may be, maybe a new career. I've heard from a lot of people considering new careers. You know why? Because I work in media, and a lot of people are very nervous about media, so they have been peppering me with some questions about, like, what do you think about this? And, uh, you know, it's such a weird thing when you're in a, a business like like I'm in right now, which is in this huge decline, right? There's consolidation, it's transition. And, you know, for me, I'm an oldster. I, I don't have to think about it quite as much. But if you are 42 years old and you're working in a newsroom, you, you're worried. So um, I've been talking to a lot of people about that. And I, I actually said to them, you know, you should come on the show. And I'm like, oh, I couldn't. I said, we'll change your name. It'll be okay. If you're in an industry that's under amazing amounts of pressures and you're thinking about what's next for you or where you might go, we encourage you to go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button and let us know if you would be willing to come on the air live by just checking that little box. Don't forget, while you're on the website, to sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Mark does such a great job with that. It is out every Friday, so today it would be in your inbox, and that would be so nice for you. And also on the website, you can subscribe to our service called Jill on Money Live, where you have access to quarterly live webinars. And the next one is coming up. We're doing a huge deep dive into the real estate market. And I know real estate is location, 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 but we have a mortgage broker. We have a realtor. We're going to talk about trends that are actually apparent in every single market right now across the country. So if you'd like to go on that deep dive with us, into the real estate market, into the ins and outs of it, and talk about rates and talk about different mortgage products, join us for Jill on Money Live. Again, Tuesday, September 24th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's just one hour. And that will cost you $35. You'll get that webinar. You'll get three more after it. You'll have the back catalog. You'll get bonus video content, all for 35 bucks. Oh my gosh, Mark, what a deal. Unbelievable. Anyway, today we are going to do some emails because they are piling it up. So let's get going here. Uh, this is from JC. JC says, ah, Jill, I love your show. Mm, thanks, JC. So here's the question uh, or here's the, the message. My wife and I, 45 and 43, make about $170,000 per year. She has a pension with a school system. She plans to retire at age 53 with a full payout. I assume she'll receive about $5,000 per month and she would have health care coverage. Oh, that is so valuable. My gosh. All right. So here's what they have. They have traditional IRAs with $80,000, Roth IRAs with $30,000, a crypto IRA with Bitcoin in it, fifty grand, 401k, $110,000, savings, $4,000. And college 529s, there is $42,000 currently for the three kids. There are twins who are 11 and um, an eight-year-old. All right. So here's what we got. Monthly contributions to a Roth IRA, about $1,100 a month. College, $300 a month. And the work 401k, $400 per month. The only debt is the mortgage, $107,000. Oh, here we go. Mark, you're going to love this. Here's my question. This JC says, I'm paying heavily down on this mortgage because I want to be free of any debt and invest more aggressively over the next five to 10 years. <laughs> Stop. Should I, I I'm never going to convince someone like this, so I'm going to just keep reading. Should I consider selling the Bitcoin, pay the penalty and the tax at the time so I can rid the primary mortgage even quicker? With zero debt, we'll have another $2,500 to $3,000 per month to invest. I'm thinking about cars for kids, college, weddings, and down the road. I'm 45. I'd like to have some good options to retire as well in my mid to late 50s. Let me know what you think. JC, I don't think a lot of this plan. First of all, I don't know what your mortgage interest rate is. I'm going to just guess that it's pretty low. I, I could almost guarantee it's below 4%. This is dubious math. Okay, guys? Because what happens is, let's say that JC pays down that mortgage with whatever assets. Let, I just pretend, let's just pretend he has $107,000 sitting in an account that is just waiting to do something with. If you have that $107,000, if you pay down that debt, that mortgage debt, yes, you are uh, relieving yourself of this quote unquote burden of having a mortgage, but you're also locking in a 4% return 
maybe even less, probably more like three or three and a half percent return. And um, and you lose the access to your hundred seven thousand dollars. You lose that liquidity. So, you know, yeah, you'd have another twenty five hundred or three thousand dollars to invest. But this is such a rotten deal. Like, I can't even tell you, like how much I think that this is a deal that's going to harm you in the end, not help you. And I really think that people need to try to uh, reason with themselves. Like, I know that I want to pay down the debt, but what Jill says is having the access to the money and the money that can grow faster than 4% or whatever the mortgage note is, is more important. By the way, I mean, there's so many questions I have. I, I don't know how much they spend every month. I, I understand they're going to have a pension about $5,000 a month, but in their mid forties, their numbers are low. I mean, and, and now I know why they're low because all the money has been going towards the mortgage. Just a bad. Right. Idea. I mean, honestly, if you're paying like $2,000 a month extra to your mortgage. Yeah. That's that. There's the money, right? That there's the money that would have accumulated had you not been doing that. All right, JC, come on the air with us. We'll talk you off this idea. All right. Next. This is from Carol, who writes, I have two adult grandsons. They're 34 and 38. They've not made any move towards retirement funds. I would like to establish some kind of retirement for each of them that they cannot access until they are at full retirement age. What's the best path for me to take? I plan on putting $25,000 for each one over a period of time. I have a brilliant idea. I presume that these two adult grandsons are working. Let's open a Roth IRA for each of them. And then you can put seven grand a year for the next three and a half years uh, and be done with it. And that's so that's such a great what a nice thing. They have to have earned income. But let's presume at 34 and 38 that they do. And they're under the threshold. And they are. But they probably are under the threshold. I'm guessing they are. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. I made that assumption. You're right. Meaning that um, income wise, because presumably if they were making more money, they'd be like, oh, I'm using my retirement account. Maybe they are. But let's find out. Okay, this question is from Jonas, whose subject is, how far can our assets get us? Jonas says, I listen to your podcast all the time. We've gone to two different financial planners for one-time sit-downs. The first was about 10 years ago, and the other was about two years ago. And they both told us how well we're doing. But as I listen to your show and I think about it more and more, maybe we're in trouble. I I always think that an advisor is much more likely to tell you're in trouble than you're fine. So let's hear what this is all about. Jonas is 52. His wife is 47. Two kids, a senior and a sophomore in high school. They live in a high cost of living area. Their house is paid off and it's worth nine twenty five. Oh, by the way, paid off house. Again, if you really hear uh, this is driving me crazy, but OK, so let's see how much money they have. But, you know, a paid off house, you could have access to that money. And I promise you, if you had access to that money, you'd feel more confident. But that said, Jonas has got a million bucks in his 401k. And um, $885,000 in a brokerage account and $465,000 in Roth IRAs, ninety grand in the HSA, and then some money in 529s, $150,000 total, $130,000 in high-yield savings, and seventeen grand in T-bills. Okay, no debt. They spend $12,000 a month. It includes everything. After the kids are launched, which is unknown, I suspect we would move to a lower cost of living area. And our monthly expenses would drop to seven to eight grand a month. What? $5,000 a month difference? I doubt it. But okay. I I just never, ever, I never think of that. I would always think a bigger number. Um, Jonah says, we got no pensions. Family history is not great. So I'll probably take my social security earlier than 70, maybe 62. My job security is very uncertain now. um, And maybe only two to three years to go. They have together two hundred forty thousand dollars a year. Um, at twenty grand is his wife, so he's the main breadwinner. Two twenty, um, he says. I could take a pay cut as soon as next year if work does slow. If my job wraps up in two to three years and I can't find work, when our assets get a, wh- where can our assets get us? Provided my wife would be able to continue to work, can I retire? We have over $3 million in assets. I feel, listen to this guy, so with lots of O's, stressed. They've got wills and all that stuff. Million and a half in life insurance, 50 on his wife. He maxes out his 401k, his HSA, and he contributes to the 529s. Okay. First of all, I would never assume like that best case scenario that your, um, that your monthly expenses are going to drop to seven to $8,000 a month. First of all, 
you're going to lose your health insurance in right. That's what we have to assume that in two to three years that you're going to lose your health insurance. So automatically what I would do is I would have an, at least an extra two grand a month, maybe already we, the spend of 12 grand, you think you're going to go to seven to eight. No, you're going to 10, maybe let's just say 10. All right. So the question is that if in two years, at your age, 54, let's call you 55, right? In three years, 55, your wife is 50. You have your kids are in college. They're doing their thing. And now you got to spend 10 grand a month. Uh, how long is that money going to take you? Eh, it's not going to take you as far as you, as you think. Um, you know, the million dollars in your 401k, remember that that hasn't been taxed yet. So we have to pull that out. So probably would, you know, and you might wait a bit to do that, but I don't think you get to do this. I, I don't think it works. Do you disagree with me, Mark? At 10 grand, 120 grand, think about $120,000 a year and think about having this $3 million, right? I don't think you can do it because I think the 3 million will maybe create 30, 35 a grand at a time. So about 105. So you're almost there. I just don't think this works so great. And he's so, so young. You're only he's only so young. Right. So it, so what the, so a few things to consider. One is you're not doing anything with a senior and a sophomore in high school right now. So you got to grind it out. So the answer is I would never assume that your expenses are going any lower than 10 grand a month because you're going to need that money. And you have a long way to go before you can qualify for Medicare. And your kids are going to probably stay on your insurance till they're 26. So you need insurance. As you are approaching these next few years, I was just talking about this in the intro. If you're working in a place where there's a real downsized potential in the organization or in the industry, what I would be doing right now is figuring out what could I do from age 55 to 62 for five, six, seven years where you can help bring in some money, not 220 a year, but could you bring in 120 a year? That'll get you there. I think that'll get you there. It really will. Um, but Mark, the social security claiming at 62, because his wife is only making 20, I still think he should wait till 67. So she gets a higher, even if his life expectancy isn't as good, waiting will get her a better benefit because she's going to claim half of his. Don't you agree? Yeah, because she's only making, you know, I, I don't know what she's been doing in prior years. But yeah, based on her current income, it's probably going to make sense for her to claim his. Yeah, I would think so. Um, okay, so that's it. Give us a holler if you want some help. That's probably, probably a bummer for this guy, but sorry. Adam writes, I recently saw one of your YouTube videos and I thought the information was great. And it inspired me to submit a question. He's talking about our videos, our YouTube show, Jill on Money, powered by the compound. So check that out, gang. All right. Uh, Adam is 48 years old. He's married. They live in Minnesota and they're going to retire when they are, uh, she's 62 and he's 67. They make about 250 grand a year. Um, their combined AGI was about 205,000, um, retirement accounts, 180 in Roths tax deferred, uh, 775 HSA 73, a brokerage 180. Current plan is to eventually move south for the better climate in terms of both weather and taxes. Here's Adam's question. We would like to even out the tax deferred to tax free account ratio. But if we are planning on moving to a state with no income tax eventually, does it make sense to put a majority of our retirement savings in tax deferred accounts to save on the six to seven percent Minnesota state income taxes? especially now that we think we're going to be moving in the next 15 to 20 years, or should we prioritize funding the Roths and pay that Minnesota income tax on the surface? It seems like taking a tax deferral on the Minnesota income tax is a guaranteed return of 5%. Is it oversimplified to think about it that way? So it's not, I mean, it is oversimplified to think of it that way, but I get your point. Do we really, do you want to put the gun to your head about that? That's the, that's the real issue. Cause what if it's, um, you know, I don't know, maybe you decide like, Oh, I'm going to stay in Minnesota after all. <laughs> you know, what if you do, what if you decide not to move? So maybe maybe you should just split the difference. Maybe do halvesies because um, I guess if you knew if you like pinky swore with me, oh no, we're definitely doing it. That's fine. But I don't know. Maybe maybe that's not going to maybe that's not going to be the case. If you really knew you're going to do it, yeah, then then just wait. 
then wait till you move down and then you can uh, make that happen for you. I would do all Roth. I mean, there's a lot of uncertainties and they, they have basically 800,000 in pre-tax. That's going to be, you know, one point in, in the next 13 or so years, that's going to be $1.7 million. It's just going to keep growing. Yeah. Well, so listen, I think that for most people, it does make sense just to do the Roth. If you're feeling a little queasy about it, don't worry. Um, get back in touch with us. I would be very interested to hear from this guy. I really want to, because if they already had, let's pretend they already had a place located that they could go to. Maybe I would change my mind. But, you know, if you want to just split the difference, it's fine. If you want to go all Roth, like Mark said, and if you want to really, you know, peg this to you must move to a lower tax state. Just remember, you might move to a state with no income tax, but income tax rates overall could be higher also. So there's that because he he has a, uh, the wife has a pension, I think. So you just be interested to find out a little bit more about you. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it. Our show, right? Mark, uh, we, we did it. It's fantastic. So uh, another fabulous show. Happy Friday the 13th. I'm on my way out to a big conference in uh, LA. I'm looking forward to that. So uh, I'll report back on that when I return. There'll be something like uh, 2,000 financial advisors at this conference. So, you know, there's going to be some shenanigans. That's all I can say. If you've got a question, go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button. Please let us know if you'd like to come on the air live by checking that box. And yes, Jill on Money Live, you got to sign up for it. 35 bucks for a full year, four quarterly webinars. Next one, real estate. We are going into the real estate market Tuesday, September 24th at 7 Eastern time. You can subscribe to us on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And don't forget, we have a Friday kind of mission here where we thank all the people who make this possible. So number one is you guys. Um, Number two, really number one, one, I would say that the number one person is my executive producer and king of all things web, Mark Talercio. Our music is composed by Joel Goodman. We are distributed by the fine folks at Odyssey. And we always ask you to lift someone up, change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.